this organization is unique because of it is the way it has been set up. It's first time to make an institution for uh, a non-for-profit institution for sport security. So this is a contribution from Qatar to the world of sport. This leg was against, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I am very much delighted in the beginning to welcome you, and I wish you a happy stay in the state of Qatar, and I hope that your conference will meet each and every success. The second is the betting-related incident faced with external agencies, essentially the police. The real-time exchange of messages and vital people. And once you step on the court, you really want to feel that's your safe haven. I always... You want to, but, but do you? Well, unfortunately, after what happened to me, uh, I really didn't for, for an extremely long time. And you hope, <coughs> you know, that that will never happen to another athlete like that because uh, for that to happen in a place where it's where you should feel the safest and to be taken, that feeling to be taken away from you, it really uh, rattles your confidence, I guess would be the right word. You don't really have one competition which has, you know, uh, a level of security that's a, such a huge inconvenience that you would choose not to go there, or a competition that has such a low level of security that you're concerned for your safety, so you wouldn't go there. You know, when it comes to security at these types of events, spectators uh, are certainly a priority, but also the athletes and then uh, the security uh, uh, efforts of any event affects the athletes and how the athletes perform. So I think that it's important to have the perspective of athletes. And then it's on WTA Tour or Grand Slams for a season in championship. The 1997 Grand National to see that this is not a new phenomena, but one that has been magnified by globalization. Threats to an event security are no longer just local. They can come from anywhere in the world. 30 billion times during the 64 matches of the 2010 World Cup. No sporting event today is immune from being targeted by terrorists or other violent criminals. This has forced host countries to dedicate more time and resources to these events, now making security a core element in the organization of all important sporting events. <laughs> We're finding more and more that uh, terrorist groups and organized criminals are targeting major sporting events for criminal activity. And what happens is that a country hosts an event, it acquires a lot of knowledge and expertise about security, and then it dies. And what this conference hopes to do is make sure that that knowledge and expertise gained is shared for future holders of major sporting events. What sport hasn't been terribly good at in the past is knowledge transfer. Everybody tends to want to reinvent the wheel and. This is a fantastic opportunity, I think, to, to pool best practice, both in security and in integrity, and, uh, and the first attempt really there's ever been to bring people together from all over the world to, you know, to pool what is clearly a huge reservoir of knowledge. It's been a wonderful opportunity uh, to meet people in similar positions from other sports, other governing bodies of sport, and through meeting them, through hearing the work that they're doing, through being able to share the work that we're doing, I end up with great optimism and great hope for sport in the future.